guys welcome stephanie morris to the q corner convention oops i might have just brought her straight in there she is she's hello. with us there she is hello stephanie hi, hi how are you are you good i'm here i'm good excellent I'm good i'm basically in everybody's living room right now which is not intimidating at all everybody's what sorry <laughs> Uh, all right, we ready? Yeah, are we ready to rock? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, let's do this. All right, hey guys. So, yes, my name is Stephanie Moros. I'm here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I am uh, one of my specialties is line work, really fast line work, trying to make awesome things in under three minutes. So I'm going to show you some of my new stuff uh, that I've been doing lately. A lot of good three minute designs. And are you guys having trouble seeing it? We good? All right. So I'm going to start with these cute little bodies that I've been doing lately. These cute little little bodies that I'm doing. Uh, we're gonna start with this little clown because he's really fast to make and he's adorable. So you're gonna start with a five inch round. Uh, you're gonna need a blush 260. And then you're gonna need a Caribbean blue 160, just like our round. And then we're going to need red for his shoes and his nose. So that's a red 260. And I'm going to do his hair with a green 160. So you just start by inflating your five inch round. And you want to make about a four finger round. And you want to make sure when you tie it, you tie it really close and keep it nice and round because we're gonna split this, but we wanna make sure it doesn't go down into the nozzle too much. So we have our five inch round. Then we are gonna blow up a blush 260. Now your blush 260, you don't need too much. We're just gonna do right around his face. So we're gonna do a pinch twist. About a three finger, another pinch twist. So you should have this. And then we're going to take that five inch round and we're going to twist it a little less than half, almost like a snowman. Where, oh, we're going to twist it to where we've got a bubble on top that's a little bit smaller then the bubble on bottom. Then you just take your 260 and we're gonna put it around the front. We're gonna wrap it to the back. And you're gonna twist it around that other pinch twist. And that's all we need of that. So we're gonna tie it up real good. All right, so we got this so far. Doesn't look like much, but I promise he's gonna be a cutie. So right now you wanna take your Caribbean Blue 160 or whatever color you have that matches your five inch round. And you are going to want to tie it into one of those pinch twists. And we're going to use this to make the brim of his hat. And we're also going to use it to make his arms. So we're going to go over the top and wrap into this pinch twist. Then we'll go to the other side. We're gonna wrap back into the pinch twist on the other side. All right, now one of the things I like to 
do whenever I'm doing really fast line work is I like to prevent any breaks in the balloons, any times I have to break and retie. So this is, it's kind of cheating, but nobody's gonna know, so you should be fine. We're gonna take, and instead of tearing off this 160 and make his arms, we're gonna actually do it to where you just kind of push a little air out until his arm is coming out almost underneath his chin. You make a little bubble. And then you're gonna do the same thing in the back. You're gonna push a little air out and go back. So it looks like his hands are kind of off to the side. Once you're done with that, go ahead and tear the rest of that off because you don't need it. And this is what we have so far. Now, he has to have his big red clown shoes, so I'm going to use a red 260. Excuse me. And I'm going to make two flower petals, just two basic loops, and a pinch twist. Now, the good thing about this design, and I'll show you when I get done, is it very versatile. Um, it's not just this little clown, but you, it, I have a lot of different characters that I make out of this same design. All right, let's get him turned just right. So we just attached those clown shoes to the bottom. And now I'm going to give him his little clown nose. Just take the end of that red 260 and make his little clown nose. I cut off a little bit of that. Now all I'm doing here, I like to make him where he doesn't actually have any eyes. It also helps to make him a little faster. So I'm just going to have his nose wedged right up underneath his hat. So I just wedge that in there, and then you can actually pull the tail through to the back of the head and wrap it in to the opposite ear. So he's starting to look like a little clown. And now his hair, I'm going to use green for his hair. For his hair, all you're going to do is make five bubbles out of whatever color 160 you want for his hair. So I'm going to make five small bubbles. Don't worry, I know you can't hear the music. I am literally dancing to a song in my own head. All right, so we got five bubbles, and then I just took the third bubble and I gave it a little pinch twist and that pulled it together. And I'm gonna attach that to one of his ears. Then I'm gonna run the green hair in the back of his head. Attach it to that other ear. And now we need five small bubbles out of this 160. One, two, three, four, and five. I know you guys know how to count. And I have my shoes off for just such an occasion. All right. Done with that green balloon. Same thing here. I'm just going to go here and I'm going to pinch twist that the one right at the top. Give his hair a little bit more of a position. So this guy, I know he's turning into this adorable little thing, right? 
Okay, so here, all I usually do is give them a mouth. If I'm in a hurry, I just take um, a black Sharpie and I just give them a little half smile like this. Oh, maybe put some, some buttons on his shirt or something like that. So that would work just fine. We could stop there. But I usually like to give him something in his hands. Um, and I, the last one I did, I gave him a little, I just made a little small one balloon dog out of a 160. So it just looks like he's making balloon animals. And instead of giving him just the, the black uh, smile, I went ahead and came in there with that white Sharpie or the uh, white edding actually, and then outlined it. So gave him a little bit more of that clown face and he's holding his balloon dog, which you gotta love that, right? So this guy, um, I've used a lot. And what I love is if you'd rather make him big, look how cute this is. So instead of that five inch, you go ahead and get the um, 11 inch round. So that's the top of that 11 inch. And then this is the bottom. And then we just use 350s and 260s for the hair. So everything's just a little bit uh, bigger for this guy. And then he's still got his little balloon dog. So uh, this one is was a really popular design back around Christmas and during St. Patty's Day even. Uh, I used the same design and gave him a beard and that was the leprechaun that I was using for some of my St. Patty's Day events. Well, what few St. Patty's Day events I had. And then I used him a lot for uh, Christmas. Uh, Santa Claus, this Santa Claus was great. I actually used a 321 here. Um, and I can show you guys that one real quick. Really simple with a 321 head just wraps around the 321. And Santa Claus, and his little elf buddy, gotta figure out which way to turn him. There we go. So same thing, it's just a 321, it's the same process. We're gonna wrap that 260 all the way around. This one was really fast. I was able to get these elves and Santa Clauses done at Christmas in about two minutes, two and a half minutes. So it was really great for all of our Santa events. And then, oh my goodness, I just, I was playing around with this idea today. Look at this cute little baseball player, right? Oh my God, he's all like, swing, blah, blah, blah. I know, it's adorable. So um, lots of things. I can't wait to see what some of you guys uh, come up with, with this, this style. I have any kind of little cute, adorable character. Uh, it's just a really quick way to not have to make a body and the face and the hat and everything else. So just cutting out those steps is really nice. So if there's anything that uh, you come up with, definitely tag me in it because I'd love to see some other things with that design. And that is, um, you could tag me at Baton Rouge Balloons on, on Instagram or Facebook. That's a good way to, to get to me. So I'm gonna show you real quick just how we do the 321 version. And you can also do the Santa Claus or the elf, or you can make it into a gnome by using a, um, a, a red quick link or a green quick link also. But main thing is if you don't use 321s often, just make sure that you are pushing it. I'm gonna pull this up here so you can see. Make sure you're pushing the air all the way into the, into the tip of that 321. <laughs> Act like you've done this before. All right, so for Santa Claus, we really just need about this much on a 321. And you could totally make uh, this into a gnome, and I do a really cute gnome with this, but my girl Laurel already came out with a really cool gnome tutorial and hers was kind of cuter than mine so check that out don't tell her i said that
All right, so for this one, I'm not gonna walk you through everything. I just wanted to kind of give you a quick show. So same thing as we did with the clown. And we're going to wrap around. And all you really need off of this is the tip of that blush 260 to make the nose. All right. Now Santa, we gotta give him a beard. That's the main difference. I'm gonna start with the uh, white on there. I know it's like a weird time to be teaching you guys Santa, but so I started here with that pinch twist. That's where his hat's gonna come down. And I'm gonna do a beard. And I'm gonna go across the top for his hat. And I'm gonna go across the back for his hat. All right, so same thing. Pull that 321 down, that gives you that nice little Santa's hat. And then all you do is go in, add the arms like we did earlier, eyes, really cute Santa's hat, a Santa, and a really cute elf to go with him. And what I love about these is they sit on top of a headband really easily without having to make a flower or anything else. So it's just a really good one if you want stuff to be wearable. These small ones like the clown and the elf, they, they go really easily onto a headband. All right, so that's enough of that. Let's do something else, right? All right. So another one of my favorites, I love to make vehicles and things for line work. And a lot of people don't like doing vehicles because they feel like it's too many steps. So I'm gonna do a quick uh, excavator. And if you've seen this excavator, you've seen it on my page, this one a lot. This one is fun. It's got it's got a lot of impact. Sorry, I'm sure that's pretty loud right there. But it makes a big impact and it's um, really fast. And there's a lot of stopping points. So I'm going to show you the quick way, and then I'll show you some little add-ons. But all I'm doing is I'm taking this yellow 350. And I'm leaving about a four finger tail. That should be good. And I'm just gonna start by making kind of like a little crab claw, you know? We're gonna do a small bubble and then a larger bubble. And just lock that in. And then we're gonna do a pinch twist. So that's going to be the bucket on the excavator and now we're going to go and make that the arm or boom or whatever it's called we're going to make that part so we're going to go about six inches and we're going to make another pinch twist got this so far then about about four or five inches here. And we're gonna make another pinch twist. We're gonna soften the rest of this and hit ourselves in the face with glue. I'm gonna wrap that back in. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is the first part of that excavator. And next we're going to add the tires. So to make the tires easy, there's so many ways to make tires. You guys know this. You could take uh, two black rounds and split them and then connect them together and it'll just be like four little bubbles there. That's really good. I tend to turn this into, um, if I do it with two sixties, I tend to turn this into a bracelet. 
So I usually just make a four petal flower out of uh, 350. So it gives it the look of tires, even though it's really a four petal flower. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is my go-to whenever I need to make a really quick um, Paw Patrol, uh, Paw Patrol design, and I'm going to show you why. But also, so see, just four petals, four petal flower, and that's going to be our wheels. Let me get it out from in front of me so you can see. All right, so this is just going to sit underneath. And now we just need to have something come down from top just to hold it together. So what I'm going to do is actually I have these adorable Paw Patrol prints. Uh, this is rubble. Those of you that have been living under a rock and do not know what Paw Patrol is, rubble is pretty popular. And then I've got a five inch clear balloon. So I'm just going to take that rubble balloon and I'm going to stick it inside of my five inch round. All right, so I'm here. I'm going to inflate the clear balloon just a little bit and then I'm going to inflate rubble a little bit more. So you have something like this. You can obviously just use your clear, uh, your five inch round, and that would be fine for this. But I do like to put a print in there. It just, the kids seem like that a lot. Now we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it on these tires. So just pull it through, wrap it into that flower. Now if you're really in a hurry, you can give this to a kid and they're going to be perfectly fine with that. But I'm going to show you how I usually give this to a child. I usually go ahead and add a few more details. So I'm going to grab a black 160 and I'm going to blow it up almost all the way. All right. I'm going to put a pinch twist in the end of it. And then remember how I, I kind of made this soft earlier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just take that pinch twist and I'm going to just roll it around the 350. It's just going to lock that into place. And then I'm going to go right to where the top of the five inch round is and I'm going to make a bubble and a pinch twist. Then I'm going to go across the top of the excavator to about where that five inch round ends and I'm going to make another bubble and another pinch twist. All right and then I'm just going to go back down into this big pinch twist on that yellow 350. All right. So we've got a little bit of an outline, but it's not very sturdy. So what we do here is we're just going to go back and redo what we just did. So we're going to go back. Let me see if I can get out from behind it. We're going to go back to that pinch twist, wrap it in. I'm going to go across the top. Wrap it in there and down the other side. Okay. It's 
this is really great when kids are asking for a tractor or something like that. Usually they'll love something like this, an excavator. And if you want to go one step further, you can always take an uninflated black balloon. I usually put a little puff of air in there. And just run it along the top. Just like that. And that is the cutest little digger that you can get done in under three minutes. I promise I do this one a lot. So definitely a quick one. All right, next, my favorite, my little baby fire truck. I hope I'm going slow enough that you guys can keep up because I'd love to see some of these pictures when you're done. Gonna be up all night watching everybody else. So I hope to see some of these come into my inbox. All right, so for the fire truck, we're gonna start with a red 260. We're gonna do a red 260 with about a four finger tail. And you're gonna start by just doing a pinch twist. And then whatever width you want your truck to be, I usually do about a hand's width. And then another pinch twist. All right. So from here, we're going to make just a little bit bigger bubble, almost like you're making the letter D. And then we're going to go down and just make a square. So about a four finger bubble, five finger bubble going down, a pinch twist, a cross. Another pinch twist and back down. All right. And then for the back of the fire truck, the back of the cab, we're going to do just a simple four finger bubble, a pinch twist, and another four finger bubble. Making sense now. And we're done with the rest of that. All right, so this is really, I know it looks really simple, but it's gonna be cute when we get done with this. It's gonna make sense, I promise. Uh, we're gonna go next and make the tires for our fire truck. So just like I did with the excavator, I'm gonna use a black 350 because I can usually get all of the tires, everything's out of one balloon, and that helps me as far as how much time I have to spend on this picture. So I'm putting maybe halfway full of air. Um, we're going to start with two flower petals. Now for this, we're gonna have it sit here. So we want the two flower petals here and then we want a little bit of space before we do our back two tires. So it's almost gonna look like a, a dog bone. It's gonna be a small bubble and then we're gonna do two more flower petals. Back tires might be a little bigger than my front tires. And then you can pop off the rest of that. All right, so now we've got our tires. So I'm going to set these two to the side. And we're going to make the ladder. Take a white 160. 
And you're going to inflate it almost to the end by the four finger tail. We're going to start with three finger bubble and a pinch twist. All right. Now, in order to get the ladder out of one 160, I have to do it a little different than most people do their ladders. But if you if this makes sense to you, it's going to save you time every time, I promise. All right. So it, we're going to go down. And this is going to be the bottom rung of our ladder. So we're going to go down, make a pinch twist, and then we're going to go right, right back up and into that pinch twist. So if that makes any sense to you, we went, hopefully you can see this, bubble, and then we did a pinch twist, bubble down, pinch twist, and then a bubble back up. And then we're we're going to make another bubble, another pinch twist, the second rung of the ladder, another pinch twist, and then we're going to make another bubble going back up. So, so far that's what we got for our ladder. Then we're going to make the top rung of the ladder, pinch twist across, but instead of going back, after this pinch twist, we're going to connect these sides coming down. We come down and we're going to twist that in. We're going to come down here. Push that in, and then you want these two to be the same size. So we're going to pop this way down here at the end, and we're actually going to tie those two ends together. Just like that. Now that's going to be our little fire truck ladder. And the next thing we need to do is make, just make the little cap for the fire truck, okay? I know, I just gave away the ending, right? So we're going to, uh, again, if you wanted to put a print inside of this to have, you know, uh, the other Paw Patrol dog, Marshall, if you want him driving the fire truck, or if you want to put another print inside of there, or even make a little tiny fireman, that's great. <sighs> But I'm just going to show you basically a clear quick link. Only about a hand's width. So we're going to start putting everything together now. So you're going to go and take the end of the quick link, pull it through that curve in the front, you're going to tie it right here. All right. Now we need something to connect the back end of the fire truck to the tires. So we are going to take the ladder. And the ladder is going to go into this square and tie it directly down into your tires. Then you just take the rest of the top of the cab, you take that knot and you tie it into the pinch twist and just tuck it, tuck it in there a little bit. And you're starting to get a pretty quick little line work fire truck again if you had to stop here you totally could um i like to add a little bit more for the fire truck i like to add some silver i love this chrome silver so i like to add it anywhere i can oh happy birthday wake up
All right. So I just do like a little kind of like a front bumper for this fire truck. So I just tie it into one side of the curve, and then I go across the front and tie into this other pinch twist. A cute little fire truck and uh, here depending on if it's a nighttime event or low light I like to put uh, one of those little neon loom lights or one, uh, some of those lights inside of a like a white round and attach that pinch twist and that'll give you that uh, fire truck look but if you don't feel like using your lights or if it's in the middle of the day and doesn't make sense you can just Take a yellow or goldenrod 260. Just make a couple pinch twists. So I just did three pin three pinch twists, and I'm just gonna attach it to the top. fire truck and add some stuff to it um, you know add some little details some lines uh, you can give them a little smiley face or like I said you could put somebody riding in the cab and that's a really cute one that is super fast this one takes me a little bit three minutes or maybe a few seconds over but totally doable if you practice this one you can get that one done fast all right, so we're going to switch gears, and I hope you guys are able to see me. It's hard for me to tell, so I'm going to slow down a little bit and let everything catch up. Uh, next thing I want to do are some of my cute animals that I like to use. Um, this one, I live in the south. <laughs> So I actually get asked for a pig a lot. Uh, I don't know if that's common everywhere, but this pig's really cute. So um, definitely, I think it's a good one to have in your repertoire. All right, so we're gonna start with a pink 260, or actually two pink 260s. <laughs> Pink 260 with about a four finger tail. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Another pink 260 with about a four finger tail. All right. So basically, instead of starting the pig snout with uh, a tulip twist. We're going to start with two tulip twists and we're going to twist those together. So you want to go into your 260 with a quick tulip twist. Roll that in and then make another tulip twist on your other 260. And we're going to take those two, hold the knots in both of both tulip twists and we're going to roll them together. And then I take and I push them kind of toward the center. So where the tulip twist makes the snout of the pig. All right, now a pinch twist. And that is gonna be the bottom lip of the pig.
All right. From here, you're going to want to make the two cheeks of the pig. So we're going to do a flower petal on each side. Not a three finger flower petal. And another three finger flower, flower petal. So now we have the snout and we have the two cheeks. All right. Next, you want to blow up a white 260. We just need a little bit, just enough for the eyes. So we're just going to tie that into the cheek. Now the white is going to be the front of the pig's face and the pink is going to be the back of the pig's face. We're just going to go up and twist them both, a little three finger bubble. And then we're going to make another three finger bubble here. And we're going to twist this back down into the cheeks so we're going to have Two bubbles for the eyes and two bubbles for the back of the head. Then you can pop off the rest of that white balloon. All right. All right, so here's what we have so far. I've got my two white bubbles that I'm going to use for the eyes. I've got pink for the back of the head. And then those two twists in the front. All right, so from here, I've been using the same pink balloon to do all of that. So it's getting close to the end. So I'm going to switch over to the pink balloon that hasn't been used yet. And with that pink balloon, I'm going to give it a little bit of a stretch because we're going to do the ears out of this balloon. It takes a few twists. So just have that pink balloon where it's going to be coming up next to the side of the head. And then you're going to twist it right above the eye and make a little pinch twist and a soft flower petal. And that's gonna be his ear. Then you're gonna go across. So whatever, whatever amount you need to go across there to make sure that it's not a big gap there, but it's also not pulling it apart. So me, it's about a, about a three finger bubble. Then another pinch twist. And then a soft loop again. All right. So it's going to go up, over. And then we want to go back in, back into the cheeks. Let me straighten this up so you can see it a little better. So now we're just going to go back into the cheek on the other side. Thank you. All right, so there is that little, little piggy. All right, so.
So I'm pretty much at the end of this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Because all we really need now is to make his, his legs. So that's our little pig space. And for his body, we're going to just use a pink six inch quick link. So we're going to inflate it a little under inflated, just big enough to be a little bit bigger than round. Tie that off and just tie it straight into the cheek and the back of the head, just like that. Everybody with me? All right. Okay, so I'm going to make a quick, just some quick legs. So I'm going to do about a four finger bubble, another four finger bubble, and a pinch twist. And that's going to go right there where the quick link is. And then this one is going to come back. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a four finger bubble and another four finger bubble. I'm running out of room, so I'm just going to pop that. I don't need the rest of that. So there's his legs, just like that. And then what I like to do here when I'm going to do him in like a seated position, I just bring these back two legs together. And then I'm going to rotate them around a couple times till I have this cute little sitting pig. And then you can do balloon eyes or you can um, draw the eyes on. I usually draw the eyes. So for those of you that do not like drawing on your balloons, I totally get it. But if you, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. One way if you're kind of, if you're not so good at art, this is the way I started is, uh, I actually just started by drawing the number six. So people tell me they can't draw on their balloons because they do not know how to draw. If you can draw the number six and fill in the bottom of that, you can make some eyes. Uh, you can also come back down on the other side. So that's just a quick one. Um, it's not the one I use now, but if you're just starting with drawing eyes and things like that, that's a good way to get started. All right, so this little piggy is going to go away. Now, the next one that I used to cringe every time somebody asked me for a fox. I don't know why, but foxes are like the new unicorns. So uh, I came up with this uh, fox design based off of a two balloon cat. So uh, most of us that twist a lot, we've all got a two to three balloon cat design that we use. And so I just modified mine and turned it into this box. So you're going to start with an orange 260 and a white 260. By the way, it's like 12.48 in the morning and my internet was not working right. So I'm at my mom's house in her kitchen. She's going to be so mad at me tomorrow because I'm just like 12.48. I'm teaching a balloon class in your kitchen. Mom, it's cool. And she works at a nursing home, so she actually has to go to work tomorrow. So we'll see. She, I, might, I might have to make her breakfast or something. 
Uh, anyways, back to class. All right, so you're gonna start with your orange and your white 260. About a six finger tail on both of these. And all you're gonna do here is make about a three finger bubble. You don't want the face of the, of the fox to be too tall. So uh, I usually go with about, about a three finger bubble, right? And then I'm gonna make two flower petals for the cheeks. All right. All right, so now just make some bubbles. We're gonna do that muzzle area. So do two bubbles. See if I can get to where you can actually see this a little better. Two bubbles. And bring them back in and twist them into those two flower petals you'd already done. So now I have just this. So all I need left for his muzzle is the um, pinch twist. It's gonna be his bottom lip, sort of like the bottom lip we had on the pig. All right. So now I've got his cute little face pretty much done. All right, now just like we did with the pig, we're gonna go up and over around his, his face. Okay, I have to tell you, this is my fault. I haven't had my nails done in three weeks, right? They're getting a little jagged, all right? All right, so we'll try that again. Bubble, pinch twist. Maybe this. Then we're gonna go over with a three finger bubble and another pinch twist. And back down into his cheek. All right, so it's just a basic two balloon cat head that, you know, everybody pretty much does this two balloon cat. We're just gonna change it up and we're gonna make this into a really, really cute fox. All right, so if this, if I were gonna make a cat or a tiger, I would just start, I would just go straight into the uh, front legs the back and then do the back legs just like I would a uh, like a one balloon dog. But since I'm making a fox, I like to make him in a seated position. So I'm gonna make his, this is gonna be his stomach. This is gonna be his back. And I'm just gonna do about a two and a half, three finger bubble. I don't want his back to be very long because I want his body to be small. So I do a bubble, a pinch twist. This is gonna be where his tail is. And we're gonna do a two flower petals. Kinda of like his back legs. All right. So this is what I've got now. All right. Now his stomach's gonna be a little bit longer than his back. That way his, his tail's not right underneath it, right? So we're gonna make his, his stomach a little bit longer. Curve. And at this point you're done with this white balloon. So you're gonna pop that off. Now, again, this class is called I Got Three Minutes because 
I usually only have three minutes. <laughs> so in order to get the fox done in three minutes, I kind of have to cheat a little bit. Uh, so I take my black, my black 160, and give it about three, four fingers tail. But the trick to this is I'm not going to break this black 160 until we're done with it. Um, so it saves a little bit of time not having to break it and retie it in different places. And I'll show you how I do that. So I start by making a, a loop about, yeah, about three fingers and lock that in. All right, that's going to be one of his ears. So you take that loop and you're going to attach it to one of these orange pinch twists. And then I'm going to shape it to where it's a little bit pointed right here on top. I got one ear for my fox. And then I'm going to take this 160, I'll get the tail out of the way. Take that 160 and I'm gonna push all the air out. And I'm gonna twist it around the opposite pinch twist. Just like that. So that uninflated 160 is hidden right there you see it all right now the other ear same thing we're gonna make a loop and we're gonna go into that pinch twist i'm glad all right, now I've got both ears. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna push the air out of this 160 and we're gonna go, we're gonna put it down the side of the head and into the cheeks. So now we've got an uninflated portion right there. But the way his head's built, you're not going to see it. It's going to be hidden behind this orange bubble. All right. Now I'm going to do the bubble on top of his nose. So on top of this muzzle, we're just going to make a soft, bubble out of this black 160 and we're going to pull it down and we're going to keep this uninflated under here and then it's going to come out under the cheek. I'll try to do that slow so you can see. I don't want to lose you here. So just a small bubble and you want to stretch it and as you stretch you see I'm I'm pulling that air out as I stretch that balloon. Let's fix him. Straighten him up a bit. Now, just like I did with the pig a while ago, I'm going to do both legs on one side, both legs on the other, and then I'm going to rotate them underneath. And that's going to give him that seated body that we want. All right, so I'm going to do a about a four-finger bubble and then about a three-finger bubble. Go to the other side. Another three finger bubble. Another four finger bubble. And then back into his cheeks. I know I'm going to show you what I just did. It's easier to do that afterwards. 
So basically I went down, across, and then across and back up. And that's all I'm gonna need out of that um, out of that black 160. Now take these back two legs, these back two black 160s, bring them together, and rotate it around. So I've got this cute little box just sitting there. And if you get time to make this out of a 350, it's actually super cute out of a 350, but it does take a little bit longer. So I just wanted to teach you the basics here. And then you can try making them a little bit bigger. It's really, really cute out of, out of 350s. All right. Give him a cute little face. There you go. Cute little box. Little 260 box. Adorableness. I know, right? I mean, I'm guessing that's what you're saying. I can't hear you, but I'm assuming that you like it. And if you like it, I like it. Thank you. Um, all right. I think I have time for a few more. So, I'm going to let the camera catch up with me a little bit. Give a chance for you guys to catch up with me. I'm going to make a panda, a cute little panda. And this panda only takes three balloons. You need a white 350. You need a black 260. And you're going to need a green 160. So start by inflating your your white 350. Now for this panda, I just do um, two bubbles for the face and two bubbles for the body, and they're all going to come out of this white 350. So you're just going to do two bubbles, lock it in, and break the rest of that off, tie it off. All right. All right, we're going to do that again. I feel like we all need a dance break. No. I'm not crazy. I'm not talking to myself. Ernest is here. He's, he's my light and sound crew. And he won't let me he won't let me turn the camera that way though. Alright, so now I have two sets like this. These two bubbles, these two bubbles. I'm going to turn this into cute little panda. And I love to put this one on a headband. I love to do wearables. Uh, I know a lot of you guys and gals out there like to do wearables too because anytime I'm working outside and I can strap a balloon to a child, there's a lot less chance that I have to remake that balloon over and over and over again. So everybody's happy. Everybody wins. 
All right, now we're gonna take our black 260 and we're gonna inflate it. We don't need much on this one, so you can leave a nice long tail on there. All right, we're gonna start by just making two really small flower petals. like that and that's going to be his ears or her ears I'm not sure this one may be a girl because we had to make it all these animals boys all right so you're going to take your bubbles and you're going to slide that 260 through the middle there we go somewhere in there somewhere in the middle Right in the middle. There we go. Don't worry, I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. Like that. Perfect. All right. So that is his. That is the panda's head. You're gonna make a really, really small bubble. You don't. You want the bubble to be not to stick out from between those two white bubbles. Okay, so that way the body will be really nice and tight when you finish. All right, so from there, you're going to make four. You're going to make four bubbles for his arms and legs. There we go. So I've got one, two, three, four. Two of them are going to go on one side of the bubble. Two are going to go on the other. And you're going to wrap it back into the neck. So, oh, hard to show you whenever I'm also wearing black. There we go. Now, I like to pop it way down at the end. And then I pull that uninflated balloon down underneath the bottom. Back up through. Maybe isn't that necessary, but it makes the body hold together a little better. And it kind of makes it all cute and pudgy. Cute and pudgy is my motto, so we're going to go with it. And then I keep this extra here because we're going to use that to tie it onto the headband. So this is what we got so far. There's our cute little panda. And we're just gonna add some, some quick artwork to the panda. So I've got this kind of bean shape, a big circle. Just like that. And then you're just gonna fill in everything outside of the circle. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this space in me because it's a little easier for me to do. So once you have that colored in, you just want to go into these white circles and you want to just add the pupils. So I'm going to just do a basic eye. Nothing too fancy today. And then a little nose and... Cute, cute, cute little panda. But whenever I put the panda on a headband, I'd like to make it uh, a little special. So I give it something to stand on. I take a green 160 
and leave about four or five finger tail at the end. There we go. And start by making a five petal flower. Lock it in. All right, so once I have made a five petal flower, I'm just gonna come out and instead of doing a six petal, I'm gonna come out and make a pinch twist. So now I have this. I'm gonna attach the panda. Remember I have a little bit of that black 260. So I'm going to attach that. Here. Right. And then I'm going to come up and make just a little, a uh, little piece of bamboo that he's going to be holding on to. Okay. So we're going to come up and make a pinch twist and a loop. And then we'll come up a little more and make a pinch twist and another loop. So I've got this and I'm just going to take this pinch twist and I'm going to lock it in right there into this hand. A little bit of a twist. There we go. Just like that. And this panda can go easily onto a bracelet or a headband. And uh, I tend to put this on headband a lot. And I also like any balloon that has like a a big white balloon here because whenever I do add lights to it, all I have to do is stick a light between these two white bubbles and all of a sudden this headband lights up really, really well. I did I did some of these at a wedding for the dance for the dance floor and they lit up and everybody loved them. So definitely a, a cute one to put onto a headband or a bracelet and also really really fast cleaning. All right, we have some time to switch gears. I'm gonna let it catch up a little bit and just talk to you guys and be like, hey, what's up? Anybody got some coffee? I'm gonna take a drink. How about that? All right, another one of my favorite things to make and also can be made in three minutes is a trumpet. So if you guys haven't seen me teach this trumpet, it's one that I use a lot. And if you haven't tried making musical instruments out of these chrome balloons, then you really need to try it because it just, they come to life with all that really nice shiny chrome. So I'm going to make a really cute trumpet out of uh, a chrome seven inch, and three chrome 260s. And the best way to start this is to go ahead and inflate your uh, chrome seven inch and one of your 260s. You're gonna start with the bell of the trumpet. All right. So I've, I've overinflated this a good bit, give it a nice good stretch, and then I'm gonna let a little bit of that air out because I'm going to need to tulip twist this to start the trumpet. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and inflate one of these chrome 260s. Ooh, ah, I know, it's beautiful. 
All right, this one is going to tie into that tulip twist. So I like to have that one ready to go. All right, so take your chrome, take your seven inch, and you're gonna push it up towards the nozzle. And push the nozzle all the way through. Grab it on the other end, nice tulip twist. I like to twist it a few times because honestly, I usually just tie this directly into that knot. And it's usually enough with the amount of twist that I put on it that it doesn't come undone. But just to make sure, you can always roll that tulip twist down. You should have something like this. All right, so remember a little earlier we did the, the technique I did to make the ladder uh, on the fire truck. We're going to do the same thing to make the valves for the trumpet because that's going to allow you to make this trumpet without having to break the balloon several times to make those uh, vertical valves. So we're going to start with about an eight finger bubble and we're going to do two pinch twists. Now I'm putting two pinch twists at the top because I'm going to come back and I'm going to um, add the keys. But if you are making this in line work and you don't want to use the keys, you can always just do one pinch twist at the top. Okay, just like we did with that ladder, I'm gonna go down, four finger bubble, a pinch twist, and then I'm gonna go back up into those two pinch twists on top. Then I'm gonna do it again, but instead of making it a big gap between there like we did with the ladder, I'm gonna do a small spacer bubble, and two more pinch twists. Okay, we're gonna go down and do the same thing. We're gonna do a four finger bubble, a pinch twist, and then back up to that double pinch twist. All right, so you can see we got two valves, but they're not connected at the bottom. All right, now I've got just enough room to do one more spacer bubble and two more pinch twists. And then I'm going to pop the rest of this. Could go ahead and inflate another 260. We gotta make one more valve. And then the hard part's over, I promise. So you're gonna take that one and just tie it in where we left off. And we're gonna do that last valve. We're gonna do another four finger bubble. We're gonna do a pinch twist. And we're going to go back into the double pinch twist. So just like that, you've got all three valves in your trumpet, but none of them are connected at the bottom. We're going to take care of that. Pretty much everything else is going to be done with the rest of this 260. So I'm going to stretch it, make sure it doesn't have, uh, make sure it's nice and straight. And we're going to give it a good bend. So this is going to be, we're going to bend this around. want it to be nice and smooth curve. So we'll give it a nice bend. And then you're going to put it into that pinch twist. And now we're going to put another spacer between each of these and connect it as we go. 
So I've connected to the first pinch twist. Little spacer bubble. Connect to that second pinch twist. And then again, one more spacer bubble. And I'm going to connect to the last pinch twist. I should be here. All right. I know, I say all right a lot. I realize I say all right and okay a lot. You don't realize that until it's really quiet. I realize I just say it a lot. So these are my two pinch twists going down for the top. That's gonna to be where I go back and put the keys so we can play this. Ernest is laughing at me. I don't think it's nice when he laughs at me. All right, so again, I gave it a nice bend here. You want this bend to come right about to where it's touching the that tulip twist we already did. And we're gonna lay that across there. And you want the back of your trumpet to be just past the end here. Okay. So there you're gonna put, I'm gonna try to get three pinch twists out of this. I think I can, I think I can. I think I can. All right. So all we gotta do now is hold this in place. And the way that I found to do that best is by taking a puff inflated 260. And I'm going to attach it to one of these uh, pinch twists up top. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down, try to hold it with my hand and not cover up what I'm doing so you guys can see. So I'm actually going to take this and wrap it around that 260 and back into one of those pinch twists. Just like that, so I've got this holding it right here. And then I'm going to stretch that uninflated balloon to the other side of those pinch twists. I know this is where my hand's all in the way. And I'm going to attach it there as well. So I'm going to lay it over top and I'm going to attach it. Hopefully it'll make sense when I get my big hands out of the way. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do any singing. You see, makes sense. So this would be a place that we could stop. Uh, I've made this one a few times in three minutes and usually, um, I can get this one done right at three minutes, but since we have a little time, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to make it look a little nicer. And I'm gonna show you some fun stuff we can do to make it All right, So I'm gonna take this gold palm 260 and two pinch twists. And this is just to make it a little extra pretty. Wrap it around there. Off. There we go. So it makes it look nice and it gives it that nice clean look right here, which I love. And I'm a little picky about this because I was a band nerd. So when I made this trumpet, I needed it to look very specific, very specific about how I wanted it to look. 
So if you give me two hours to make this trumpet, I would take all two hours. But it's good to know you can also make it in a hurry. So I'm just taking, um, there's a few ways you can do it if you want to add the, the valves, the keys for the valve. So one easy way to do it is just a little puff on the end of these chrome 260s. And this trumpet is one of the reasons why I hang on to my 260 scraps and I use them a lot for this. I also like to use them to make the center of flowers and stuff in different uh, headbands is for the grown-ups. They tend to really, really like that little touch of shine that we put in there at the end. All right, so we just make a couple more of those real quick. And I've got seven minutes, so I can do this. I have done a few decor pieces with these musical instruments. Um, I do this and a saxophone usually, um, and I've done those for decor pieces and they were really well received. So, you know, if you're, if you're like me and you do a lot of decor and twisting, this is one of those that it, it lends itself to both sides of that coin. Uh -oh. You see, it's my noise measures in the back of it. Should be in one of these pockets across the top. Sweet! I knew I had it in there. Try not to pass out in front of you guys. That would be ideal not to pass out. So I know Ernest is over here looking at me like, use your pump, use your pump. Oh, yes. All right. So it's a pretty good looking trumpet. It's a do same so myself, but the part that makes this really fun is uh, a lot of times, and actually I'm working on a, a library show that includes uh, some, some big band swing music playing, and then uh, it includes me actually playing uh, one of these trumpets. And the way I do that is I just have the little, the little noise maker, like the little squeaker that goes in, um, uh, there's a few suppliers that supply these still, but it's just that, it's a little noise maker, and I just wrap it in to those 260s, and it makes the cutest little prop uh, for like a library show, or um, you can do some cute little gags with it. Um, even, in, even in the restaurant, I tend to, do some gags with this this trumpet. So if you haven't had a chance to uh, make one of these, definitely try it out. It's a lot of fun. If nothing else, just make a video of you playing trumpet. And always gets a really good reaction. Um, again, I use this one a lot at uh, restaurants. And my favorite my favorite thing is to uh, just have the, the noisemaker in my cheek. And so I can play the trumpet, but when the kid gets the trumpet, they can't play it. And it's it's kind of a, a joke because the parents get it and the kids kind of get a little upset. <laughs> but it's, it's a good, it's a funny little joke. And then if I really like the kid, at the end of the night, I'll take another uh, noisemaker and put it in there. And then the joke's on the parents because the whole way home, they're in the back seat playing a trumpet or a saxophone or whatever instrument I have given them. So uh, let's see. I got through all of those way, way, way fast. 
hope it wasn't too fast for you guys to keep up. Um, I had a good time teaching this class and I can't wait to see what everybody else is going to teach. I'm going to be like you guys. I'm going to be up straight for five days trying to watch all these classes. So I'm really excited about that. If you need to see any more of these pictures, uh, some of these little characters that I've made, I'll try to take a picture of these and put them on um, like the little baseball player uh, or the, the big clown. I'll take some pictures of these and that way you can have some uh, good shots of these later. And if for some reason some of the video wasn't coming through, I'll, uh, I'll try to put some instructions together on some of these designs. Um, big thank you to Qualtex for putting this together because just like you guys, I've kind of been uh, sitting at home trying to figure all this stuff out and this has been a great break. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody's teaching and I can't wait to see what everybody's got going. So thanks again to Qualtex. Uh, I hate going behind Juan Gonzalez, because he's amazing, so that's whatever, but that was my that was my bad. But thanks, guys, and if there's anybody out there that takes some good pictures with these, make sure to look me up on uh, Instagram or Facebook at Baton Rouge Balloons, and just tag me in them. I'd love to see if you guys made any of these. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. There was not one design that didn't have the cuteness factor turned up to 10 there. Yeah, they were absolutely amazing. Oh. The comments were absolutely fantastic, and the nuggets of gold were flying through the screen as well, Stephanie. So, you know, you're saying you didn't really like following Juan because he is a great twister, but you are an amazing twister as well. I mean, that the first design, the little clown, absolutely floored me. The little it, clown, right? Yeah, he absolutely... Lord me it was the um i think one of yeah that, that one, one. <laughs> i i loved the uh the fire truck uh like the, I, oh, yeah. I, I think like somebody so, said it in the comments about they really hate doing vehicles because you get asked for a vehicle yeah and you i would say a normal so go to bad. yeah you you start thinking big crazy sized things and oh it just becomes a bit of a a bit of a challenge um, with the time that you have. You know, it's not that you can't make it, it's just that you don't have that time. But that design is absolutely super cute, hits all the boxes, uh, and it doesn't kill you for time. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, amazing. Well, amazing. Thanks, guys. Thank no, you thank you. Me. And now he's throwing balloons. <laughs> yeah, you <again. laughs> It's raining balloons. Uh, thank you very much, Stephanie, and we hope to see you thanks, again sometime guys. soon, I can't okay? Wait to see everybody else. All right, you take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Stephanie.